Ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the session number seven, titled From Numbers to Names, the Use of Technology and Information for Better Days for Our Countries. The speaker will be Juan Carlos, the former president of the Republic of Panama. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming to this event. It is an honor for me to be here today at this Knowledge Summit, thanking the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Knowledge Foundation, and especially for all of you for spending this afternoon with us here. I'm an industrial engineer, graduated from Georgia Tech in the United States, uh, and I would like to explain why I'm giving this conference this afternoon. The title of the conference is the the use of knowledge and technology to achieve the SDGs. But before uh, sharing with you the conference, I would like to explain the title of this conference. As an engineer, we love numbers. We love statistics. We always talk about numbers. And when I was preparing to run for president, I have many meetings. And I will always remember a meeting with my health team. We had a meeting with all these doctors that were preparing my healthcare plan. And in my country, we have 4 million people. And they presented to me that 200,000 people suffer from diabetes. Even though that we have 60,000 people in a country of 4 million working in the healthcare system, we just knew 10% of the population that was affected by diabetes. So we have the numbers, big numbers, 200,000, but we just knew about 20,000. So 180,000 people didn't know they suffer from diabetes. So I asked them, who are they? Where do they live? What medicine are they taking? Are they being treated? So that's the main reason why I'm giving this conference this afternoon, because I feel that the future of public life is changing from numbers, statistics, to names, to identify who are the people suffering. As I mentioned in the conference before, I think the future of politics it's not about ideology. It's not about center, left, or right. It's about the problems that affect the people. And I will share you, with you another story. When I was a very young student at the university, at that time, Japanese food was not known. People didn't know Japanese food. But my house was very close to a Toyota facility. So there was a very good Japanese restaurant. So I love Japanese food. I started eating Japanese food every week. But at that time, 18 years old, I didn't know sodium was so bad for your health. So at 35 years old, as campaign manager for a friend of mine running for president, I went to a doctor. He took my blood pressure, 140, 90, and he told me, you have to avoid stress, avoid politics, exercise three, four hours a day, have a healthy diet, and since you're not gonna do it, you're gonna take a pill. So I've been taking a pill for blood pressure, for high blood pressure for 20 years and I haven't had a single incident of that. So I was lucky to learn at 35 years old that sodium was bad for your health, that you cannot take the rice when you eat sushi and put it from white to black. Because you, that's what kids do every day. When they get 35, 40 years old, then they will suffer from high blood pressure. So the idea of, of being able to identify our population, get to know more about them, use data to be able to identify the illness and the pathology that affect our people is the reason of this presentation. And that's mainly how I found, as preparing myself to run for president, that we have a lot of numbers, many statistics, but no names at all. We have 17 SDGs, and all world leaders now are focused in investing the wealth of our countries, our natural resources, to be able to achieve the 17 SDGs. But there's one. There's one of them. And it's the only one that has a direct impact on, on 10 of them, which is number three. Good health and well-being. Healthy population is the key to be able to achieve the SDGs for any country. Because if not, all the money that you need to invest in schools, roads, massive transportation will be invested in taking care of your population. So if you implement preventive health care in your country, this is what's going to happen. Spain, 87 years is the 
expectancy of lifetime in Spain. Two reasons. One, preventive health care. Two, promoting the Mediterranean diet. Olive oil, wine, fish, vegetables, fruits. It's simple. It's not complicated. But we need to share this knowledge with everybody. Not when they are 40, 50 years old, when they are 12, 15, schools, everywhere. Try to train our people to be able to understand more their body, what they eat, how they're living, how they are uh, exercising every day. And thus, if you see the different healthcare system, Spain moved to number one, even above the United States with all their wealth, because Spain has done the right thing in the past years, especially in preventive healthcare. And to be able to achieve the SDGs, if we achieve number three, then we will be able to impact 10 of them. Why? Because when we work for a healthy population, we can fight poverty and hunger. We can improve the quality of education of our people. We can improve water and sanitation. We can increase employment and economic growth. We can support industry and innovation. We can reduce inequalities. We can build more sustainable communities. We can educate responsible consumption and production. And we also can create different partnerships between public and private sector. So number three has a direct impact on 10 SDGs. So this is the key. And it's simple. And it's amazing today how we're using data for everything. In my country, 4 million people, there are 9 million cell phones. So 2.2 .2 per each citizen. It's um, the amount of money being spent in data, I don't know, we're talking about billions of billions of dollars. But we have to use that data to build healthier communities, healthier people, not to attack each other, to criticize each other, to create unrest, social unrest, but to build better countries. And that's key, because we have the technology. And now we have to use it the right way. And that's why I'm presenting this today. I will share with you an experience in my country. When I was seeing all the statistics about 200,000 people suffering from diabetes, 400,000 people high blood pressure, 300,000 people blood disorder, we didn't have any names at all. So we designed what it was called the health census, which is mainly what I'm going to present today. What was the idea? We don't have to wait for people to come to a hospital to ask for a prescription. We have to go to them. We have the capacities to go to them, to be able to do blood tests, to be able to do a blood pressure tests, physical examination. So we decided, instead of waiting for people at the hospitals, let's go out. So we identified that population 40 years old and over were close to 1.7 million people. In five years in government, we were, we were able to do blood tests and blood pressure tests and physical examination to one, close to 1.4 million people. So now we have the names. Now we know who they are, where they live. We found people with 400 sugar levels on their blood, and they didn't know that. We, have, we found people with 160, 110 blood pressure, and they didn't know they had that. So to put them in treatment, to give them the right medicine, that was the main objective of the health census. And we did it in five years. And all this data now is being, it's on the hands of the government. And it's a lot easier to implement preventive health care when you have the names of the people that are suffering from these different pathologies. What we found after we did this, three main pathologies that affect 70% of our population. High blood pressure, arterial, arterial hypertension. 38% of the population suffer from high blood pressure. Sodium, no exercise, not the right lifestyle. 17% diabetes. 17%, that's 200,000 people in my country. And if we don't take care of that soon, then that will really cost a lot of money to the states. And 41% high levels of cholesterol, high level of, of blood disorder, dyslipemia. So it really, now we found that close, close to 800,000 to 900,000 people suffer from these three main pathologies. Well, how do you treat this? It's very easy. There's one medicine, I, I, I will give you the names, but there's many pharmaceutical companies, 
There's just one medicine for each treatment. I take one. Mine is right here for blood pressure. I take one every day for 20 years. Haven't had a single incident in the past 20 years. But if you don't know that you suffer from that, then heart attack, different problems, and that's really what we did in our country. Totally different. Very people in the rural areas, for the first time they saw a doctor going to their town. It was to see their faces really something that in public life is not easy. Public life, you get a lot of attack from many people, from media, from uh, opposition leaders, from people that are competing with you. But when you go out and you see people being tested, their blood tested, their high blood, their pres blood pressure tested, and then they get the treatment, the prescription, and they then end up living a healthy life, that's really something that makes you feel good. What cause, causes the main disease? Sugar, carbs, salt, sodium, fat, lifestyle, and nutrition. Just these five items will give you these results. 70% of the population of our country sick of three pathologies. And the treatment is very easy. The main treatment for the three pathologies, can I, somebody say from the, it's exercise. The treatment for the three pathologies that we found that our people suffer from, is just walking, exercise, two, three hours a day, good diet, and medicine when it's just too late, like in my case. So this is the, the key, that we should use information, knowledge, and technology to be able to know more about our people, but not about numbers, statistics, but about who they are, where they live. Today, it's so easy to do it. And you can see an app. So now, many countries are developing specific ads that people on their cell phone, they know what they're doing, how many steps they walk, how the time, what they eat, and, and how their health is, is doing. This is the key, using technology information to get to know our people, to get to know how they're doing. Are they being treated? Are they taking the medicine? Are they improving? Are they getting better? Or they're not getting better? It's very important to use the effective use of communication and technology by healthcare and public health professionals can bring an age of patient and public center health information and services. In Improve healthcare quality and safety. Increase efficiency of healthcare and public health service delivery. Improve the public health information infrastructure. Support care in the community and at home. And facilitate clinical and consumer decision making and build health skills and knowledge. The use of data will play a key role. The three pathologies are treated with history medicine. But it's key to understand who needs to take that. Metformina for diabetes, lisinopril for high blood pressure, and Crestor, that's, that's a specific brand. It's not, I'm just giving the example because it's a well-known brand, and Crestor for, for blood disorder. So, but what is the challenge to be able to identify who needs to take this? Who, need, who has a pathology? Who is suffering from that? Who needs to take that? It's so easy. It's not complicated. Just going out to the population, identifying who they are, what they suffer from, and making sure that they're taking the medicine. Our healthcare system, 60,000, 70,000 employees. Big question about it. Who can do this in a better way? The government or companies? Look at all these big companies. Amazon, Alibaba, Apple, Huawei. All these big companies, if you I was working with AstraZeneca in a pilot program for Panama, for one province. I told the AstraZeneca company, I will give you the names of the patients, of my citizens that suffer from these three pathologies, and you take care of them. How much that cost me? For sure, it will cost me less than 20% than what it costs us today. Because it's very easy. It's just going out there, identifying who are the patients suffering from that, and delivering the medicine using these big logistic companies, these big logistic platform companies, and making sure that they deliver the medicine to each house and follow each patient that they take it. By doing that, and a healthy way of living, believe me, we will improve 
the quality of life of our people. And that's using data, knowledge, technology to improve health in our population. And that really will move and help us and support us to achieve the SDGs by 2030. Cities, exercise. I heard here in Dubai, the government is really promoting that. that let's, let's every Sunday, let's walk. That's, that's, it's, that's the be, that's, this, this is the best treatment for the three pathologies that we found. It's the best treatment for blood pressure, for diabetes, and for blood disorder. Exercise, good diet. So, but we need to make sure that, that our citizens understand what they have, what they're suffering from. But the best and the most important thing is that, that the government understand what is affecting their people. Not numbers, not statistics, names. Names. Today, police, immigration officers, they control. They have all the information about four or five million immigrants, people working in, in different countries. They know you work in permits, when they are valid, when they're not, when they expire, when you have to leave, enter the country. If we have all that information for security, why can't I use that information for healthcare? To take care of our people. We cannot be talking about 10% of the population has diabetes. We don't know who they are. We have to know who they are. Because now we have the technology and the data to be able to get to know who they are and to make sure that they are taking their medicine and to follow that they receive. In, in my country, they have to go to the hospital, ask for an appointment, wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, ask for an appointment to be able to go to the doctor so the doctor can give him another prescription every month. I've been taking this for 20 years. Since I can't pay for it, I don't have to go to a doctor. I just go to the pharmacy and buy it. But people that need to get this medicine from social security system, they have to go to a doctor every six months. Wait online, wake up very early in the morning to receive a prescription. That's not fair. That's why I say that the future is not about ideology. It's about solving the problems that affect the people. No matter what political system your country has, monarchy, democracy, at the end, there's unrest everywhere. Why? Because people with social media are, are informed and they're asking for results. And this is a very specific plan that we are presenting here today that we did it in our country because when we... You cannot imagine how happy these people were. They didn't know what they have. They didn't know what they were suffering. They, they, they were not taking any medicine. Probably they will end in the hospital when they have very high blood pressure, heart attack, or some other disease. But after this health census, results will be there. I'm for sure. I'm very sure of that. Because governments most focus on the people, names, not numbers. And we have to see our planet. Six billion people. There's no way, nobody will be able to stop people from going to one country to another country to support their family. In my country, Panama, people from Nepal, Bangladesh, India, Africa, they travel from different continents trying to, to make themselves to the United States. And nobody's gonna be able to stop that. No matter how many walls you, you like to build, People are looking for a better life for, 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 the, for the family, for themselves. People are working. They, they go to another country and they work hard just to send money back to their family members. So nobody's going to be able to stop that. We are 193 countries, different governments. We're one planet, 6 billion people. And we have to start thinking like that. We think that, ah, it's not going to affect us. In my continent, just one situation in Venezuela, one crisis in Venezuela, 4 million people left Venezuela, more than Syria, where there's a civil war. Four million people, and there's expected one million people to live every year if the government does solve the problem. In Latin America today, a center, a leftist government just collapsed, Bolivia, and the president went to Mexico. And a right government, Chile, it's in difficult problems. It's not about ideology. It's about education, water, health. It's about a better future for the people. That, that will be a debate. That will be the debate. And specifically, in healthcare, 
There's nothing like prevention. There's nothing like really studying more what people want, what they need, what they suffer from, to learn more about them and to use the technology to be able to supply medicine and whatever is needed by the population. You see this company, you know, Big Fight, Huawei, uh, fighting with uh, Apple, Alibaba, Amazon, Uber, Didi. It's amazing how today the new generation, they're using all these big companies for everything, but they're not using the companies for healthcare today. And that's the challenge, and that's my presentation. Uber Eats, you order whatever you want to eat, and they will deliver home. You can order an Uber everywhere you go. You can order Amazon and get whatever you need from Amazon. You can use Alibaba. Now Didi is doing a great job in China, competing with Uber. So these platforms, these big logistic companies, must be used by governments to take care of the people. Imagine if we can, if I go to Amazon and give them the list, these are the 200,000 Panamanians that suffer from diabetes. Get, this is the medicine, metformina, just make sure that you deliver that and that they take it. Problem solved. Problem solved. Using data, using information, using technology to take care of our people, to implement a very aggressive and strong preventive healthcare system. And that's the future. We shouldn't allow this. Team was talking about consumption. You know, some people get an Amazon and buy things that they don't need. No, they get in the computer and start buying things the whole day. But we should use this technology to improve the quality of life of our people. And that's a big challenge for the governments, to be able to use all these. And these companies, you know, they're becoming billionaires, the owners, because they're changing everything. But now we have to use them, include them in the solutions to the problems that affect our people. And that's, that's the main message that I have today, that we have to use technology, data, information, knowledge. We have to know more about our citizens to be able to take care of them. Because no matter how strong is the dictator, how, loved, how good is this democratic system, how loved was the king, loved by all the people, if we don't take care of our people, there will be a lot of challenge to any political system anywhere. Because now with social media, people are not waiting. They just want results. They want governments to take care of their problems. They want social peace. And the only way to achieve it is to take care of them. And to conclude, we need to learn more. We need to study more. We need to understand. I, when I was a kid, 19 years old, I didn't know sodium was bad. I saw a woman asking a question at the conference this morning about the level of sodium in water. It was a good question. It was a great question, the level of sodium in water, because sodium is not good. And I didn't know when I was young that sodium was bad for my health. And that's why I ended up taking medicine for blood pressure for 20 years. Because I enjoy eating Japanese food, using soy sauce, and I didn't know I was poisoning myself. Same with sugar, same with uh, other uh, habits of consumption. So I will conclude with this two-time Nobel Prize winner. Nearly all disease can be traced to a nutritional deficiency. How do how we identify that? By knowledge, by knowing more of population, why they're eating, and by guiding them to a healthy life. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Juan Carlos.